Welcome to our new inaugural series, Friends of Swish. I'm Sean Schultz, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Vince Vargas of Mayans MC. And just so you know, Vince, I always chose the Mayans over the Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to hear that. <laughs> Love J.R. Bourne, but I'm, I'm rooting for Easy and you guys. So. <laughs> J.R. Bourne is a great friend of mine and an incredible actor. He seems it. Yeah. Um, with Mayans, since that's kind of coming to an end, obviously you can't give nothing away, but are you happy with how your character is going to be wrapping up? Um, I'm happy that I've been a part of a show as long as I have. It's not very common for, for an actor to, to be new. I was new six years ago when we first started, uh, but it's not common for, for an actor to show up and be a part of something like this. Uh, so I'm just grateful to have had the opportunity to be able to display my acting skills to hopefully land other jobs in the future. What has it uh, been like? Have you guys, are you as close as uh, it seems? It, is it a family for life? Yeah, you know, there, we, I don't think we could help it. We've been together for so many years. We've all became brothers and we know each other's kids' names and wives and all that. And so we've been, we, I've seen several of the guys' kids go from high school to college, you know, and so yeah, we are definitely family. Um, it's funny how this career field goes. You know, we might not see each other for a few years, and then all of a sudden we land a movie together. Who knows? We'll see. But, uh, you know, we text all the time. The show's been done filming for a while now. Uh, we text all the time, and so it's been cool. Learn from your character, if anything. A lot of actors draw lessons from being in character. It was interesting to play a character that was kind of the opposite version of myself, right? I was a border patrol agent for several years, and I used to be on a special operations uh, special operations team that would try to disrupt, you know, drug trafficking organizations. And then now I'm playing someone who is a drug trafficking, you know, MC. And so it was really fun to kind of um, to kind of hone into that and really kind of use for my real life and some 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 being able to kind of like build the character that way. So I thought that was great. Do you think it's going to carry you the minds roll into uh, more acting gigs in the future? Or is that just something you were trying and might get out of? No, I would love to. I want my career to be an actor. You know, I'd, I'd love to continue on and doing this. You know, there's some there's some meetings we've had that look good. I'm also pursuing the writing side of my career. I wrote episode eight. I co-wrote episode eight with 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 another gentleman who's a great writer. Um, and so my goal is to continue to tell stories. I would love to create my own show one day and be a showrunner and, and hopefully run seven seasons, you know? So the goal is to stay in the entertainment industry and to continue to be a storyteller. With episode eight, first, are you able to tell us the title? No, I think it's online though. I think you can find it online. Um, with the writing, a question I have would be, has that been therapeutic for you as a veteran and somebody who's dealt with PTSD and stuff to kind of start yeah. exploring that side? Yeah, I've been a writer for many years. You know, I've been a writer for, for a while now. I've written a few books and I recently put myself through a screenwriting course through the Writers Guild. And, you know, I was given the opportunity to write for the show. But screenwriting is definitely a lot more challenging than than just regular book writing. You know, I just finished a book. Uh, it comes out November, November 14th, uh, about my time as a Border Patrol agent. And that in itself is therapeutic, right? That Any kind of writing for me is therapeutic, but writing a script form and trying to, trying to convey a message for the actors was extremely challenging, but it was fun. Um, and then I got to work a lot on my own character just by chance, episode eight, you know? And so I got to... Uh, to write for myself in a sense. And that was, yes, that was therapeutic. It was, a, it was, a, I found a lot of value in that. Your character, he is a veteran and you're kind of seeing that storyline play out with these little hints coming uh, with your own experience as a veteran. How was that playing a veteran? How did you kind of segue into that? Yeah, I think originally first season I was carrying a rifle and the writers were like, well, it's hard to deny that you don't know how to carry that rifle. I looked like a soldier, you know? Um, and so they said, your character is now a veteran background. I was like, Oh, cool. Uh, from there, it's just really hoping that the storyline is something that I'm proud of, but you know, you never know, you know, Hollywood sometimes 
um, you know, makes the veteran the typical post-traumatic stress slash alcoholism slash, you know, whatnot. And so I was hoping there was going to be a little bit more depth to my character. And, you know, there has been, and it's been fun. It's been exciting to see this veteran. Yes, he might struggle with post-traumatic stress, but he's also uh, struggling with the duality of, of his, his past and his present, you know, and I think that's really fun to see. Uh, and you also see kind of a very human side of him this season. You know, if you saw last episode, it was it was a version of Gilly that most don't get to see. This kind of human, emotional, um, reflecting on his life, and I thought that's really cool to be able to see that. And 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 it puts it, it humanizes veterans, and I think that's important to do. First of all, what's the biggest stereotypes if you think there are any against vets? I mean, you know, yeah, we you hear know, issues. yeah, the, you- I think the biggest. The biggest thing that you see out there is everyone they they jumped onto the term the 22 veterans a day right and yes there's a, a lot of veterans who do commit suicide a day but that um that number is actually misconstrued and it's taken out of context and when people start to use that as a marketing uh as a marketing tool to emotionally get people invested into the topic well, now you've told the world that that's all we are, right? And so the most spoken about term for veterans is 22 a day and not successful veterans who have overcome hardship, who have found success in the civilian world. Uh, It's not spoken about, right? And and that to me is what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to be just an example of like, no, we can go to combat. We can we can suffer uh, our 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 issues and and our traumas through combat, but we could also prevail and, and do more. You know, we don't have to be put into this bubble of alcoholism and and post traumatic stress and suicidal. I find that to be short sighted, and it's an easy conversation to have on veterans in film and television. And I think that's why a lot of people jumped on board with it. But as well as like I said, the marketing the marketing aspect of it. So I'm hoping to see a big shift in the narrative and showing the successful veterans that are out there in the world and showing that, you know, we can go through hardships, but we could also find our way out of it. Resources available out there to, for uh, people to find stories on six, on these successful vets or even for vets who are trying to figure out their next step? It's tough. You know, I, I have... Anyone can ever, any veterans can ever reach out to me. Any veteran can reach out to me and I'll, I'll, I'll guide them into all the resources that I have throughout the years that I've been doing this of mental health and wellness. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of successful veterans. There's more successful veterans than there aren't successful veterans, right? And the sure. problem is that those don't get shares and likes, right? Um, positive stories in social media don't get the viral content, you know? And so when that happens, and that's the challenge is, is if you do see a successful story about a veteran, share it, you know, show them some love, give them, give them a like, because it's not, it's not common to see those stories out there because again, they don't generate the shares and likes that people are looking for. And so that's the sad part. There's a lot of us in Hollywood that people don't highlight that people don't know about, you know, and, and, you know, my goal, like I said, is if I can just be that, um, that person that other veterans could look up to and say, Hey, I, I want to do his thing. I want to do the same thing. I want to go his path. You know, that's good. That's what I want. I want someone to surpass me and become an even better writer and, and director and, and actor than I am and be successful and be able to be another beacon of light for the future veterans. You still do your podcast or no? Uh, actually just moving here to, to Texas. I'm going to have a studio upstairs that we're building out right now and we're going to get the Vinny rock podcast back up and running. That'd be nice. Cause I imagine you highlight a lot of folks on that too. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a good platform to have uh, some open dialogue and discussions about some serious topics. And so that's what I love to do. So with the issue of veterans and success and the stereotypes on them, there needs to be, as you said, a lot of more positive stories and spins on that. It's the biggest misconception. Is it the PTSD and they're all suicidal and dealing with it? Yeah, you know, like I said, everyone's jumped onto the suicidal thing and veterans are suicidal. And and, uh, you know, if you look at society as a whole, uh, we have an epidemic of suicide. You know, we have epidemic of suicide all over the place, not just veterans, but teenagers and, and law enforcement officers. And, you know, it doesn't stop. So that's a that's a societal issue that we, we need to address. Um, but for some reason, they've put that title on veterans. With your own struggles, how were you able to overcome them and get to where you are? So what I've done is gone through a lot of different modalities of healing and modalities of healing essentially is different versions of counseling. Uh, I've done EMDR counseling. That was the first one that kind of got me set on the path of like wellness. Uh, I've done sweat lodges with um, the the Lakota Indian uh, nation, right? I've I've gone, I've done stem cell treatment to help with traumatic brain injury as well as uh, pain, uh, you know, uh, 
pain that I have in my body. I've done uh, testosterone replacement therapy. I've done everything you can think of because I've done a long list of them. I've done breathing treatments, uh, um, yoga, you know, so for me, I'm going to go do a brain clinic here soon. And, and it's going to be two weeks into a brain clinic here in Dallas. But for me, it's like once I found that there was more answers out there for healing trauma and to get myself feeling better again, well, then I don't want to stop. And so I've been on the path of, of searching for more answers on how I can, one, be the guinea pig for other veterans, but two, for myself and my family. I'm also wow. sober. I've been sober for four years as well. Like there's just a long list of things I've done. Congratulations on that very much. Uh, brain clinic, what's that, if I may ask? Yeah, so a lot of uh, veterans who come out of the military with traumatic brain injuries, right? Brain injuries sometimes sustained by enemy combat or by by training or or self induced uh, trauma. So uh, I was in the special operations uh, unit with Second Seventy Fifth Ranger Regiment, and we used to train uh, in a way where we'd be very close to explosives. And what we what I didn't realize was. Uh, all those years of being around explosives and, and being close hand, they created some damage in my brain. And so I have a, a, a documented traumatic brain injury. And I didn't understand that I got out of the military and had kind of a little bit of a speech issue, but also I was losing wallets and I was losing debit cards. I was losing somewhere around 15 a year. And uh, I can get pretty frustrating, right? I was losing keys to my car, I was losing everything. And so the, the short-term memory was affected uh, from all the explosions and speech uh, was as well. And so uh, those are things that they don't talk about in the military. You just train, you train, you train, and you go to war, and then you come back and you train and train and train. You don't realize that some of that is self-induced damage that you're going to carry with you for the rest of your life. And so I'm going to a brain clinic here that's going to be introduced in different kind of skill sets to help um, the blood flow of the brain again. And so there's areas of the brain that were damaged, and what they're trying to do is get blood flow back into it so it can heal itself. And so well, I'll be going for their two, two-week two extensive program to really identify the areas of my brain that are injured and how to try and fix those. Are there um, resources you think that can help uh, show veterans, show other people they're dealing with PTSD, where to go, how to find the right help, how to, you know, maybe resources on how to get successful in their you know, passions? Yeah, you know, it's tough. I think everyone has to find their own way. I think there's a lot of different ways of healing trauma, right? There's a lot of different paths they can take or different modalities. Like I said, I've tried a lot of them and they got to see what works for them. And once they're able to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, they see some success and they feel better. Then they can start working on what their goal is or what inspires them or what motivates them. A lot of veterans get out of the military and they have trouble understanding what their identity is. They've been told what to wear, where to go, what to dress, everything, right? And so when you get out, you got to try and find out who you are again. And the only way you do that is really go out and experience life and really determine what drives you, what motivates you, what inspires you. And that's a part of it as well. So there's kind of this this levels to it of healing trauma, healing deep rooted trauma, debriefing all that stress, and then boom, start finding out what is your path in life. Mine has been a creative. I used to kick in doors my whole life. I went to the special operation, the board tool as well. And then I said, you know what? I want to start using my brain. I want to really start writing and being creative. And I've done that through the podcast. I've done that through writing. I've done that through acting. And I really feel like this is the best place and the healthiest place for me is to be in the entertainment industry. It's great to, uh, see you in a good place just from a human level but as a hispanic man see someone who's had ptsd for different reasons just to see someone to look up to uh, thank you for that by the way thank you what's next for you uh, going forward in the immediate i don't know yet so we just moved to dallas texas we're trying to figure it out here i have a couple nonprofit organizations that we're just kind of getting off the ground um I am waiting for the writer strike to open up again to kind of see what the future looks like in the entertainment industry. And I'm also working on some of my own projects. And so I'm just staying active and staying creative. You know, a lot of the stuff with the border is of, is of interest to me. So I'm probably going to go and roll back in school for journalism and she see if I can, if I can help spread the proper message of what's going on and hopefully help uh, educate and enlighten people on, on some of the issues that we have in our, in our, in the United States. I find that, you know, having a big social media following um, I don't want to use it just for marketing. I want to use it for, for good, not evil. Right. And so uh, if I can get into a school here soon and, and go for journalism and get my master's degree um, I might kind of pursue that in a little, as, it, while the time is weird right now for Hollywood, I'll just try and pursue that. Well, with the board, you were a border patrol agent. You said you have a book coming out. What is there a biggest misconception on either side 
about that? You think folks should clear up? Yeah, it's both. You know, I think when you're talking about when you're talking about the border patrol, you're talking about our border. You 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 really are talking about two subjects, and somehow they both have to be cohesive. And when I say that is, you're talking about the immigration law, and then you're talking about homeland security. Immigration laws, us as a society, as the United States of America, we've always had immigration. That's not the issue. The issue is making sure that we can fix all the layers of the immigration issues, things like um, how people come in and how they're processed and who can come in, and 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 things like that that are all screwed up for. for for years, we have to rewrite our immigration policies so that not not that they're more lenient, but that they're more clear and concise. And 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 we also have to educate other countries on how to become a citizen legally because too many people are being, uh, you know, being led astray by you know smuggling organizations. Yeah. And then you have the other side of it is we can't just let open borders because if we do that, well then we cause a danger to the United States of America, and now it becomes a homeland security issue. So you have immigration issue and homeland security issue, and somehow both you got to please. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge that we see right now is we want to defend our borders and we want to we want to stop everyone from coming across, but that's not who we are as Americans. You know, we we are supposed to be able to have allow people to come and and reap the benefits of what we have here, but they just have to do it the right way. And so there's there's a lot that needs to be fixed here and a lot that needs to be addressed. And I think the political arguments of the border have only just caused more division. And I don't I find that to be unfair. I think people need to be educated in understanding how it actually works. And also understanding the career field of Border Patrol so they don't use them as the scapegoat for everything that's wrong with the border. And that's the hard part is, is for some reason it's, it's a challenging, uh, challenging to, to understand how our immigration policy works. And, and right now, you know, there was such an influx that recently people were just getting notice to appear, right, which is just kind of paperwork and saying show up to the immigration judge when he's not overwhelmed, right? And so here's your date. But there's been very few people that actually show up for that date. They just disappear into the United States. Now, that's not too much. That's not a terrible issue. But at the same time, um, you know, the, the concern of the immigration side is like, well, that there's got to be a better way of doing that. And the homeland security side is like, how many people coming in are a danger to us? We don't know. And so we always have to we always have to look at it from two different lenses and, and try and make the best decision possible. For now, we can wrap it up here. I know you got the kids and everything. Um, like I said, let's stay in touch. I want to put any your books, anything you have up on the website, if that's OK, just. Yeah. You know, like I said, as a Hispanic man, it's good to have a role model to look up to. Uh, um, just for a spoiler, let's be clear. Is there a chance Gil becomes the president of the Mayans? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Vince Vargas, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk to you again soon. Yes, sir. Thank you.